So I present you the next speaker, Mr. Goebelbecker. He is uh, presently working in Karlsruhe Institute of Technology uh, since uh, 2009, and uh, he's an associate director of several projects within the library, and he will speak today about the re3data.org uh, repository, and I hope you will enjoy this talk. And everybody's here now? Well, um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> you, uh, several persons are still coming, but if you can also introduce yourself a little bit in uh, more deep detail, <laughs> it's nice. Okay, I have some, some personal words for you. Uh, as you said, uh, I'm working here in the, uh, in the information management as more or less as a career changer. Originally, I'm a mineralogist and physicist and worked in the uh, National Research Center in Karlsruhe. And in 2009, the research center and uh, the university merged to the KIT, to the, to the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. And within that uh, merger, also a new library was installed. And I took over uh, the group for research data management services, research services in, in the library. Originally, I'm a physicist. And I remember a word of my professor who said, you must not work as a physicist. It's enough if you work like a physicist. And that's also, until today, it's a kind of philosophy for me. Can we begin? Or? OK, OK. I will talk about Re3 data, the registry of research data repositories. You see the name is OK. It's from this three Re's. And, uh, I will tell you something about the background. The background is not quite new for you because we had uh, this morning a lot of speeches which also stressed on that background, but I will repeat a little bit of that. Uh, I will tell you about our mission, about our initial idea, why we created such a repository, about special items of the repository, the schema and the icons, the quality, assurance or performance assurance and the workflow of the repository, the web interface, the growth of the repository within the project since 2011. Yes, some information about the partners, about the initial partners and about some new partners during the last months. Yes, and about a very essential point about cooperation in the future. You will learn that it's is very essential, especially for that project. First of all, something about the background. Uh, there was a uh, German comedian who died in the 1950s, Karl Valentin. He had a nice sentence. He said, everything has been said, but not by everybody. <laughs> and so I will repeat it very rapidly, because we discussed uh, this morning about this point in details. Research data, research, research data are valuable and ubiquitous. I think there's no doubt. Also the next new technologies. We have a broad discussion about the permanent access to research data. The last uh, speech by Mrs. Stalmeyer Thielesen stressed on this point. Increasing re requirements from funders to make research data open, available, I think, to the speech of, of Martin Fetterly, growing demand for trustable and sustainable research data repositories. Uh, we heard something about DUIs, and also we had uh, a lot of experience during the last three years, uh, especially uh, regarding this point. And the trend is, we had also an example at Nature uh, this morning, the trend is also in direction of data journals, but mostly non-open access data journals. When we began the work in 2010, the first what we did with scientists to think about 
the nature of research data and about the definition of research data. We heard a definition that morning, but more or less it's a definition which doesn't really help us. And so we also made some, 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 prints, some basic considerations about research data. What are research data? And we found out this triangle, and I don't hope that this is a Bermuda triangle, but, uh, but it's, uh, it, it, it helps to locate uh, research data and to locate also special problems of research data. For example, here on the left, you have observations and measurement data. I think to CERN, I think for climate research, to, uh, geoscience data, and so on. It's also a question of mass here. You have here on the top technical documentation, method description, and here you have often legal aspects as problems. Patents, licenses, uh, reliability, um, and compliance, and so on here. And you have here on this side intrinsic findings, and what I wanted to show you, you can locate more or less concrete some, uh, some kind of, of, uh, of research data. For example, software here, or geoscience here, social, social logical research. Here on this way you have, uh, in this area you have for example, additional problems with personal privacy, data protection, and so on. I have here located quantum physics, and I think you can also here in the middle locate, for example, medical research, where you have all such, such uh, problems together in the research data. What we, the result, we found the summary of our of ideas was, okay, a very simple sentence, everybody knows, research data are of most varied nature. And research data can only be imperfectly treated by an information management like commercial information media. We saw Mrs. dalmayer Thiesten showed us how difficult it is to, uh, to find really clear descriptions and very uh, significant descriptions for research data. And it's quite different if you have it for CERN data or if you have it for intrinsic data or in arts and humanity, for example. But what we found is the next step. We have the next step of, 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 uh, of compression, abstraction, and summary data research repositories. They are mostly made by researchers themselves. They are not made by, by uh, uh, manage, information management specialists. But the data you find there are more or less authorized and authenticated by the producers. And uh, we have the RDRs, the repos, I say often repos, Centrally, like institutional repos, you have disciplinary, disciplinary uh, repos, you have local deep repos, and uh, they are very, very popular. Because, and this is, for my opinion, very essential, because they are a kind of bottom-up approach for the scientists. We learned this morning a lot of problems about re reliability between scientists and information managers. And uh, when uh, our chief partner, I forgot his name, said, we want to change the culture. Yes, this is very irritating for scientists to change the cultures. And uh, my opinion is it's better to find a way to find a real service together with the scientists. And for example, to have research data repositories and to handle with them, which were set up by the scientists themselves, which can be controlled by the scientists themselves, will help. And you see it in reality, when we collected research data repositories, we find always such point that the researchers are very uh, pressed on this point to have control on their own repository.
The first time we, uh, we worked with an initial amount of 100 repositories, and uh, we also could, could uh, find the same results than, uh, than the official results were. They were also heterogeneous, but not so extremely heterogeneous than the research data themselves. Different communities and different approaches, mostly communities in the science itself. But you find also in some EC papers some concrete words now about uh, research data repositories. For example, the landscape of data repositories across Europe is fairly heterogeneous, but there is a solid basis to develop a coherent strategy to overcome the fragmentation and, um, and enable research communities to better manage, use, share, and preserve data. Fragment, to overcome fragmentation means, for my opinion, not to centralize everything. It's enough if we can help for synchronization and to help to help we have compatibility on each level, from beginning from IT, from IT until uh, the description of the content. What is the research data repositories land, landscape? We have funders, scientists, journals, labs and universities. Funders, they expect to share their data. We heard it from SNSF today and also the German Research Foundation said at the moment, says at the moment the data should be, not must be, should be stored at least at 10 years. And uh, this is the beginning also of, of, of um, policy, of a general policy for research data, which doesn't exist until now in Germany, not comparable, for example, with the UK. Scientists, okay, scientists want to know where they can find data, data, where they can store their data. And the third community is also very interesting. We found it out during our work. There's also a community which are very interesting, how to set up smart repositories. And we, and our idea is that read-free data can also help them because we can show them best practice. We can show them, and uh, the next step, we also think about a next step maybe to set up a real service to help them to set up such repositories. Journals, underlying data must be accessible. Remember the sheets of Mr. Fetterly. They were more or less devastating about reproducible results. Yes, and we have the discussion in, in universities and research labs, shall we offer repositories for all disciplines? Uh, so we have a range also inside the institutions. KIT is, a, is the best example for that. We have, on one side, we have local repositories, disciplinary re repositories, and we have now also uh, installing, at the moment it's not yet ready, an institutional repository. And for example, it's, for me, it's, it's also very important that there will be no inner competition in one research community. And this is also one of our tasks to, 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 uh, to work together, for example, with the computer uh, center to have both, and to have both net, not as competition, more as, as some more at, uh, as a substitution, not competition. Some prominent examples, Mrs. Dalmayer Thiessen also uh, gave the example of Pangea. GEO is also such an example. This is a, but this, what you see here is the high end of of research data repositories. The low end is, for example, some URLs where you can upload, up and download files by FTP. This is also sometimes a research data repository. 
And our mission is for re3data.org these repositories to show them in a registry globally to cover data repositories from all academic disciplines and so to help researchers, funding bodies, publishers, scholar institutions to find research data repositories. And as I said, not only to find, also to, to, to find or to find them to use the data, to find them to store the data, and to find them to find out best practice for setting up an own repository. And the general aim is, it's also the general topic of this, of this session, of this workshop, aims to promote a culture of sharing, increasing access and better visibility of research data at all. The first, the first point we set up was the schema for description of research data repositories. We learned that this is a very difficult item and uh, you see here the sheet of schema two version 2.1. We published a few weeks ago the version 2.2. We published also on our website and you are invited to discuss with us, to criticize it, and to, to, and to discuss with us. The schema is more or less the unique feature of the registry because it's very comprehensive and at the same time it's, of course, then the bottleneck. Because today we have hundred and with the characters and sub-characters, we have about characteristics we have about 137 characteristics to describe a, re a repository. And you can think, if, uh, if you tell a suggester he should do that, he will say, oh, I don't want to fill in a tax, uh, an income tax declaration because it's, it's so complicated and it's time consuming. And it's not only complicated and time consuming, you also have to you also have to have a persistence between the repositories. So this is the reason why we index at the moment the repositories by an ed editorial team. You see here, the schema covers following aspects, general information, responsibilities, policies, legal aspects, technical standards, quality standards. And the first look onto the lists on our website, you will see a set of icons. Our idea is that you have a, a very fast overview about the performance of the registry. And these icons, the declaration of the icons you see here, the explanation of the icons, we have uh, icons where we show uh, uh, the uh, crucial properties of the, uh, of the repository. Information, it's vital without information, no, no indexing, but the access we have open, we have closed, and, and uh, we, have, we have open with conditions and we have closed. It, com it connects with, this, uh, um, with the nature of the data we discussed also this morning. Licenses, if there are some licenses or not. We had also the question, reuse of data. What can you do with data? Reuse. A reuse of a monograph or a journal article, okay, it's more or less trivial, the reuse. You can, you can cite it. You can, you can implement the results and you can cite it. The reuse of data is much more complicated. What means it? Can you, do, can you put in the computer for new computations or what can you do with it? Or can you rebuild the same box and so on? Persistent identifiers. You see, we have not only DUI, we have also other identifiers like handle, arcs, URNs, and so on. And we also, but, and you can see it on one, uh, in the first glimpse, you can see it by these uh, icons. Certificate, certificates and standards, policy, very vital, and you can see reviewed or not reviewed. 
I will show you afterwards what this means, reviewed or not reviewed. This is the workflow, a simplified workflow. The workflow is still under construct, the web-based workflow, the autom semi-automatically automatical workflow is still under construction, but we hope that we will have a better version end of this year in the web. And uh, the workflow you see here, we have a suggester. We say it's suggester because it can be the operator themselves of, of the repository or everybody. We have then an uh, indexing in the in our in our research data report in, in our repeat Refree data database as not reviewed. Then we will enrich it by the editorial team or editorial teams. Then we have an enrichment by the RDR operator. And in fact, this is uh, much more complicated because this is, in fact, it's a ping pong at this point. Then we have the review between some parts of the editorial teams. And then you can find it with a green icon in our, on our website, like here. You see here, these are the icons, for example, of this year, of the first, of the first uh, listing. We have a very simple search box, like Google, where we, uh, we search through everything we have, abstract, and so on we search for everything what we have in, in the files. We have filters and facets. And uh, you see here also include repositories not yet reviewed. Uh, this is a screenshot from last week. You see we have 968. And if you would press here, you will see here at the moment 9072. That's a very tiny amount, but it was also sometimes 100. Here, the gap was 100. Now the gap is very tiny at the moment, but it, it depends on the, on the uh, input of data, repository, data repositories to the editorial team. The results are now sought by weight. What means that? You can change it, of course. You can also alphabetic. Work here, sort by weight. What what mean we? What does we mean by weight? Is weight is how many icons you have. If you go, for example, to number thirty three, maybe we have the time after that to go a little bit on, online. You will see, you will see some i some some uh, some repositories which have only a, uh, a smaller amount of icons here. So here are the icons, of course. So um, a glimpse of our results following our schema. You see here, in general, this general information. You see here also these colored words, these in colored boxes. These are items coming out of controlled vocabularies. We use. Wherever it is possible, we use controlled vocabularies that we uh, have not, not such a uh, more or less voluntary input. And uh, especially for subjects, we use the vocabulary of the German Research Foundation. We tested it, British Library and so on, we tested a lot of and we found out that this is a, the best mix between actuality and sustainability. Because the problem is they move, more or less. And so we had one, uh, the DFG has changed it last year, and we wanted also to, to update our data. To, and it was a work which could be done in a certain time, and we did it, and we hope that we will have not so much movement in these vocabularies, because otherwise we have also the movements in our, in our database. 
institutions, of course, institution is only one item of that. Of course, we have not only one-to-one -one relations in the database, we have, only, we have also one-to-one-to-several, one-to-n one to several, one to n relations, and that's the reason why we have also a, a relational database behind it. At the moment, the database is, uh, is an XML database, but uh, we are at the moment uh, uh, planning a complete relaunch of the engine behind, behind the website. Terms, legal aspects, very important. For example here, licenses, also wherever it possible the URLs of the of the of this uh, of our characteristics like here too this is now Pangea standards name of the software we have been asked which is the most frequent software we have uh, it's dspace for example is the most frequent software of data research repositories these days. We have here programming interfaces, alerting services, and uh, we see here also remarks, especially for the editorial team. The growth of free free data during the years in 2012 and, 2000, and July 2030, you see more or less it's it's a constant growth. It's a, it's a constant growth. It's constant because we have this bottleneck of the indexing editorial and indexing team. Our experience is indexing a um, research data repository with our schema needs time by indexed by experienced people. In average, two hours. And if you compare it with indexing of a monograph, you need five minutes. And uh, that's why I said uh, we have here a bottleneck. And we have to think about how to handle this bottleneck. The initial partners from the project beginning in 2012 was the Berlin School of Library and Information Science at the Humboldt University at Berlin, the German Research Center of Geoscience, Mr. Heinz Pampel, everybody knows him, uh, our library in the KIT, and funded by the German Research Foundation. We are now in the second project phase, and we have uh, found foundation until end of 2015. And that's the reason why cooperation is very essential for this project. Okay, we have cooperation with DINI, with DataSide, Memorandum of Understanding, with OpenAir, BioSharing. BioSharing has a lot of uh, research data repositories which should be included also in Re3Data, but it's a question of, of indexing that. With DataBIP, this is very essential, an RDA World Data System. Especially data side and data bib. We had a, a meeting with data side and data bib in, uh, in, in March this year because I said the funding ends in end of 2015 and what after that time with the project. So our idea was to find collaborators and to find also an organization which will uh, have the auspices for this project in the future. And we find it with DataBib and DataSide. We discovered DataBib shortly after setting up our own project, I think in March 2012, and uh, our first reaction was, was we should not see DataBib as a competition. We should see DataBib as a partner. 
and we get in contact with uh, we got in in contact with databib data uh, instantly and uh, they uh, databib uh, is driven by the Purdue University Indiana USA and we learned from from the staff of databib that the project databib already has ended and they also search for partners so the, this was a very good basis and also the basis data side we find open ears at data side and so we also wrote down a memorandum of, of understanding between data side and data bib and uh, read three data to merge data bib and read three data under the name read three data under the auspices of data side after 2015 beginning in 2016 and uh, the uh, main items in this memorandum openness optimal quality assurance development of innovative functionalities shared leaderships and sustainability the upcoming steps are now finalizing the merger between data bib and re3 data okay we are at the moment we are discussing to to broaden our editorial team to staff in in uh, in indiana at the purdue university especially this is very interesting for us because they have chinese phd students and chinese and we had also a lot of chinese uh, research data repositories, okay, they have one page in English, but the rest is in Chinese. And so they can help to index them. And uh, in general, it's, it should be very wise to have also branches of the editorial team in Purdue, because there is a different thinking in the US and in Europe, and both together will have a very good synergy. Development of the workflow system, we are very, uh, we are very happy that also uh, Purdue University is interested to, to help to develop uh, the IT basis of re 3 data because we have only one person who is developing the IT, and this is not so much. And the, the person will leave us end of 2015. So, the implementation of an international editorial board, DataBib already has such a board, and we will wide this board also to the whole project of re 3 data. It's wonderful. A strong cooperation with DataSide, okay, it's all, all, we have to clear the financial part of that. Yes. Further engagement with the data repository community, this will help us that when we will be a partner or a sub-partner of data side. Further information you find, for example, in this plus one journal, uh, you have here some URLs and some mail address, also my personal mail address. I told you we are interesting for we invite you to help us uh, to discuss the schema 2.2 we are also in we invite you also to to suggest repositories or maybe your institution is interesting uh, to take part in the editorial team for that and so we are always open for collaborators Project team at the moment, you see here, Heinz Pampel, very well named, Peter Schirmbacher, he's the uh, boss of the uh, computer center of the Humboldt University, for example. Yes, and here's Michael Witt, uh, the head of distributed data curation center, D2C2 at Purdue University. Thanks for your attention and open for questions. Yes? Uh, 
Thank you very much. Is on? Yeah, it's on. Um, I have two questions actually. One is um, regarding this um, growth chart that you showed that you showed because um, there was a decrease at some point. Is that uh, <laughs> possible? A decrease, really? Uh, or did I not? Ah, uh... uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It could be a small decrease because. Uh, Actually, maybe well, even two. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. This, yeah. This is because we had some, t uh, for example, this what we have now, you see, reviewed, not reviewed. Uh, this implemented, we, I think, uh, at, oh, it doesn't work here, here in, in, uh, that, in that time. And here we had this, we had some which we included, and afterward we, we, found, we found out it isn't a real, or it isn't a real repository, research data repository, or it doesn't fulfill the minimum preconditions, for example, to have, uh, to have uh, uh, a, a privacy policy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we changed it because it, is, it looks not very smart to have 600 and a few weeks later or a few days later you have only 580. Yes, and now it's no longer possible to have such effects. Okay. This effect, okay. This is, this was the okay. preliminary, and also, you, I'm, I was more or less astonished about this very uh, calm curve, because at the beginning we had a lot of discussion, especially where were the borders of research data repositories. <laughs> Sometimes we had a lot of very interesting repositories, but there were no research data repositories. There were publication repositories, open access publication repositories, and uh, project condition repositories and such things. And so we had to, you cannot find a very sharp point, but you, you have a grayscale, what is a repository and what not. Especially, you have also a grayscale what is a repository and what is a virtual research environment. This is also a grayscale. You cannot define it uh, concretely. You have to define it individually. And that was the reason why we had such effects like there. Uh, no, uh, no loss of data. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I wanted to uh, also ask, um, since you described the bottleneck, I think it was actually when you described that chart of um, curating uh, the entries and um, that you need better strategies to address this. Uh, have you considered crowdsourcing? I mean, um, you could, I mean, just making this up off the top of my head, um, coming up with an interface um, where everyone, like me, for example, um, you know, if I bump into something interesting, I just go there and then Submit it. Um, did I miss that? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, where is the? And then you, the know, simplified. you would have an approval yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah. I think yeah. it's, it's simplified. It's simplified here. Yeah. Of course, we want to have coworkers as much as possible. But uh, as you know, also from from uh, from SourceForge mm -hmm. or such. You have to have a, an assurance, quality assurance system. What what people will let bring as as input in such things, and uh, and this is okay. This is in reality, it's very complicated because it has to be a ping pong, and especially suggest means everybody can suggest. You and me and everybody can suggest, and not only the owner or the operator of the research data repository. And how do I suggest? Please? How do I suggest? Uh, at the moment, we have on the website, we have a suggest site, a, a GUI where you can suggest. And mm -hmm. in winter, we hope that you can not only suggest, that you can also follow the web, the workflow, and, and you will get also especially some alerts and so us from us okay. to help, because we need the help of the owners. Okay. We need the help of the owners and, and the communication with the owners, and this is the next step. And this, is, this will help for the bottleneck, but it will not replace the bottleneck. Because the review has to be 
it has to be reviewed by, by the review team or review teams. Some other questions? Um, okay, I try one. Um, you showed us on the screen uh, the announcement of the collaboration between your uh, subject, your, your work, and data site. But very recently, uh, last August, uh, there was also a press release saying that data site will collaborate strongly with Thomson Reuters uh, agency. And in fact, Thomson Reuters is uh, already um, building um, a new index, which is called Data Site Index. My question is the following. Um, I, was, uh, I, I was thinking that uh, so far, open data was quite free of publishers and commercial business. And now, with this collaboration, my question is, uh, do you, do we, are you still free? to do what you want? Are you giving your work for free to Thomson Reuters and so they will have everything to build their index without your excellent, probably, IT manager? Um, so what can you tell us about this? Yes, we also read it with sorrow or with, with some, yes. And uh, we, for example, Heinz Pampel and uh, Michael Witt and Frank Scholz uh, had some connections with, uh, with uh, people of data side and asked them how we should understand it. At the moment, it's okay from data side to here, or okay, keep it cool, and so on. But uh, at the moment, we have a memorandum of understanding with data side. And we will stress on this point, of course, because we will not land at Thomson Reuters. This is clear, but uh, data side says that uh, this only uh, uh, affects part of their of their activities, and it will not affect uh, the activity concerning re three data. But you are right; we have to be aware at this point, very aware. And until now, uh, the dice is have not been fallen definitely, and so we can, we can see what we can do. And what is good on this side, that Purdue is participating in that sorrow too. Then, because especially Purdue, US, and so on, they are not interested to have uh, with free data afterwards in, in terms of Reuters, part of the web of science, or whatever it is. Do you already offer metrics uh, about these uh, repositories? Uh, for example, uh, how much time they were cited in uh, social media, or how much times they were cited in Web of Science, or Scopus, or whatever? And do you intend to also deliver these options, or these technical things, to Thomson Reuters? <laughs> it's under discussion. We discussed it, but we have no no result until today, because we see the potential danger we see exactly as you. But nevertheless, in 2015, the funding ends. We are part of the KIT. We have also an, an advisory board of the, uh, of the library, and the, li the KIT advisory board of the library or, or, already asked us what is the benefit for KIT of that project. And we have the answer was it's funded by the DFG and when the, fund, when the funding ends, we are not in the position to run it without money coming from third party. This is a general problem. So and last question. Do you know if uh, Karlsruhe Institute has got access to this uh, Thomson Citation Index already, uh, which is not in open access, but you have to pay quite a uh, quite high fee. And uh, this fee is not even available, available on the website of Thomson. You have to request for the price. Uh, it would be interesting in your own institution if uh, you are paying for the, through the access of this uh, uh, Thomson Citation, uh, Data Citation Index, and if you can find 
uh, your uh, work inside, you can have a quick look and to know if it is already used or not. Uh, it's a good question. Because, uh, uh, especially myself, I have uh, yeah, s s severe, yes, I'm a little bit a revolutionary in that way because the KIT is now part of the Helmholtz Society, of the Helmholtz Association. And in the Helmholtz Association exists the so-called program-oriented funding. The program-oriented funding has one, has, is strongly uh, looking on scientometrics. For my opinion, too much looking for scientometrics because scientometrics are more or less a very windy thing, lousy, and uh, a misuse and so on. And you can read uh, the, the, the basic principles of mathematical statistics are not fulfilled in scientometrics, are not fulfilled, theoretical. And, but nevertheless, scientometrics is very important. And so you can think that most of the scientists are forced for example, to use Web of Science, to feed Web of Science, and uh, also the, the uh, uh, Scopus and so on. And uh, if we want to have, on this point, discussions or some experiments, I will say, experiments with Thomson Reuters, we will have, we will have no assistance by our scientists and no assistance by the uh, uh, government of the KIT. This is very problematic indeed. We do what we can. We, we stress every day on this point that scientometrics is not the heaven on earth. But so the, the conclusion of this uh, small talk uh, discussion could be that um, your work uh, is not protected enough because uh, I did not see any license on your, on your directory. I don't know if it is on the Creative common license or something different, I don't know. So, okay, okay. So but your it's, own work, yes. your own work. Uh, I'm not you speaking can, about uh, the feeding. Yes, uh, you can see it, of course. It's only a screenshot, it's only a part of the website. Okay. You can see it. If you want but, to go live, you will see underlines here. Uh, this is not here because otherwise the letters will be too okay. small. This but, is only a reason. Of course, we are, th we are aware about these things. So I don't know, careful, can we go online? Because copier, uh, maybe this, uh, yeah. the, this Creative common license uh, maybe is not protecting your work of being uh, totally absorbed by like, Thomson Reuters uh, uh, for commercial purposes. So this is maybe one of the limits uh, of the system we are facing now. I don't know what the public thinks about that. I'm not as uh, skeptical. I mean, uh, I'm a bit skeptical, but I'm more in a, I, I like competition. Um, so I think it's true, absolutely true what you're saying. But, um, and I think data, um, Thomson Reuters is um, already indexing the data side metadata to capture the um, data citation stuff, etc. cetera. Um, from what I heard from other people, uh, or data centers is it's not entirely um, working, so it doesn't capture really um, what's out there. So it doesn't. So it, I heard it's not worth the money. <laughs> um, whatever they pay, I don't know. We don't pay for it. Out. I think uh, I can understand you. For example, if you read such things like here, okay, this is in principle we are open, and this is the general danger in open in open data that Thomson Reuters or Elsevier will come mm -hmm. and or Google will say. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yes. Competition. Yeah. Really, I mean, uh, really. I, when I, when I, when I'm on the website, I have the same misfeelings. But what can we do against it? <laughs> well, we can um, no. um, get uh, some funding and uh, try to um, aggregate and track ourselves. And if, uh, I mean, we just have to follow some standards. And so I think the, for example, Creative Commons community. Uh, 
is very important and has to uh, subsidize and has to be assisted wherever you can. It's, and my experience is if you go to the professors in the university, Creative Commons are known. This is devastating. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, I wonder, um, uh, as a chemist, I, I was uh, always, uh, or sometimes intensively using the Fach Informationszentrum Karlsruhe, which is which is uh, extremely uh, uh, performing, and uh, at that time. Uh, um, uh, that was a time before Google uh, had this color, <laughs> and uh, possibly. And, uh, but uh, is, is your, uh, are your um, uh, approaches only uh, directed towards uh, geosciences, or uh, are, are you merging with the chemistry field also? And in, uh, how specialized is your, uh, is your branch? Are we free data? Yes. Reef free data is, is completely is not specialized, of course, and uh, you will also find some research data repositories in chemistry. For example, ChemOcean, it's a KIT uh, chemistry database, and uh, f uh, the FITS, the information in Karlsruhe, it's from my office, 150 meters away, okay. and we meet us sometimes in in the canteen. For some for some coffee talks, uh, the Fitz is also uh, busy at the moment uh, in that way to uh, to offer open data tools at all, beginning from eSight Doc to uh, to hosting tools and so on. But nevertheless, they had also a session, a, a workshop a few weeks ago about this about this topic in Karlsruhe and but you feel that the Fachinformationszentrum has to earn money also with such open projects for example to have some some tools open access or open open science but you have to pay for the customizing and so on and it's, it's, they have real problems to exist in this new upcoming community and uh, I'm not quite sure about the strategic aim of the Fachinformationszentrum at the moment. It's a little bit unclear for me. And if you see, they have changed the name now. They have changed the National Center for uh, Information Infrastructure. Uh, it's, a, it's also, it was... <laughs> It's, a re it's not an acting, it's a reacting for my, for my opinion. Because, for example, to, have, uh, to, to, to earn money with chemical abstracts and so on, especially uh, for research institutions, it's completely uninteresting, it's too expensive and so on. They have their industry, which is still dealing with that, but I don't know, I don't know details about the uh, financial system of, of, of the financial situation at, at the moment of the Fach Informationszentrum. Okay. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>